Hello, this is Crystal Racing here with the race report for the final race of the season in 2020. The Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Max Verstappen is your race winner. 10 out of 10. Led every lap. Took his only pole position of the season. With a driver of the day performance. Absolutely destroyed both Mercedes. But he did did not get a grand shell because of course Dan Ricciardo took the fastest lap on the final lap. Second place Valdry Bottas 8 out of 10. A solid end to what has really been frankly a torrid season for the Finnish driver. Um, uh, the thing is though even though yes he beat Lewis Hamilton and out qualified him it has to be said at no point did he ever look like threatening Max for the win. Third place coming back from that the virus, Lewis Hamilton, almost 20 seconds down. Not a bad effort, but considering this is a very, very, very fast Mercedes, it's a 7 out of 10 for me. Not bad to get this result after coming back from being missing the last race, but... Uh, fourth place, Alex Albert, 8 out of 10. Once again, showing signs of improvement and could have well have got Lewis Hamilton with another two laps if the race lasted another two laps. But it looks like that performance has probably sealed his sub seat for next season. Fifth place, Lando Norris. Once again, another superb performance for the young 20 year, 21 year old. 10 out of 10. Qualified a career best fourth yesterday, beating Albert. But, the, but of course, in the race, he was never going to keep up with the Red Bull. Um, sixth place, teammate Carlos Sainz, apparently under investigation for. Let me just read this. Um, alleged breach of Article forty point three and twenty seven point four of the. FIA Formula 1 Sporting Regulation by Car 55 driving unnecessarily slowly in the pit lane. Oh, I mean, I'm not sure what's happened there, but I will be very interested to see what the outcome of that could be and whether that might re affect the result. If it's a 10 second penalty, it'll drop it to 7th, but nothing more. 7th place, Daniel Ricciardo. Um, the, uh, he was one of only four drivers to start the race on the hard compound tyres. And he made it work extremely well. Pitted on lap 39 for the, the medium tyres. And got 7th place in what, you know, for Renault whose car has been pretty slow in the you know last few races. Very good effort. And of course that is 9 out of 10. And of course, I'll give Carlos Sainz 9 out of 10 for his effort. 8th place, Pierre Gasly. Um, once again, got out qualified by Danny Krivet, but turned it around in the race. Um, 8.5 for me. Very, very good overtakes on certain drivers around the field, such as Vettel and another course. And Stroll. I'll get on to that, him later. Ninth place, Land, uh, Esteban Ocon, 7.5 out of 10. Out qualified Daniel Ricciardo yesterday for the first time in God knows how long. Um, and drove a fairly solid race, but once again got beaten the race by Ricciardo. Tenth place, my reject of the day, uh, Lance Stroll, 6 out of 10. No pace at all completely let his team down in terms of obviously uh, the Constructors Championship of course once his teammate was uh, Perez was forced to retire with a mechanical issue I mean really it was always a tall order for Lance Stroll to rest to keep hold of P3 in the championship and of course as you may know McLaren have sealed third place in the championship with a fantastic final race performance Taking 18 points whilst racing point. I've only taken one point, meaning that the 12 point gap that the 12, not 12, 10 point gap racing point had and has been completely eliminated. And McLaren take, in my opinion, a well deserved P3 in the constructors' table. 
Whilst Racing Point will lament many missed opportunities over the, this season, such as missing out on podiums at the Nürburgring, Imola, and of course that costly engine failure that Paris had at Bahrain, and of course that mechanical failure he's had today, many t way too much, and Lance Stroll for me takes today's reject to the race for what was just frankly a very slow performance. First of the non-point score is Danny Crevier, 7 out of 10. Um, yeah, out-qualified Gazi again, but frankly, its race pace was just abysmal today, and it could well be his final race in F1, I have to say. You know, um, obviously, you know, Scholar Sides drove his last race from McLaren today. Ricardo drove his last race from Renault today. Um, yeah, not much to say, really. 12th place... Kimi Raikkonen will be driving for one more season at Alfa Romeo. Remains to be seen if he's going to continue. But my God, I'll be crazy if he continues until the age of 43 at this rate. But whilst his qualifying performance yesterday was once again pretty abysmal, his race today was absolutely fantastic. 9 out of 10. A thunder. Oh my goodness me. And beat both Ferraris. And the highest place Ferrari runner. A truly sensational race. A race where, you know, I've got to say it. I've got to say it. This man still has it. Just imagine if he was in the bear car. Just imagine. He would have been right up there troubling the point scorers such as Ocon on Stroll. Oh, God, Alpha, you've really annoyed me this season. 13th place, Charles Leclerc, 7 out of 10. Yeah, that Ferrari SF1000 is a pound of crap. I, I, oh, God, I don't even want to talk about it. And, of course, driving his final race for Ferrari today, Sebastian Vettel, 6.5 out of 10, tried to make the, tried to make the, uh, uh, the long stint on the hard tyres last, just like Dan Ricciardo did. Um, but didn't work out, I'm afraid. And let's be honest, He's not enjoyed driving this Ferrari this season at all. And, you know, it's sad to think that, you know, 14 wins and two runner-up finishes has ended like this for Sebastian Vettel. You know, he's driven his heart out for Ferrari for the past six seasons, and it's ended on a very, very quiet note. At least he did spin, though. I'll give him that. George Russell finished in 15th, 8 out of 10, back to the normal stuff again for Russell. I uh, mean, trying his bit, driving his heart out in what is a pretty poor car, but I mean, what the hell can he do? Uh, Joe Venazzi uh, finished 16th. I don't know why on earth he decided to try and stretch the mediums out until lap 27. No wonder he ended up finishing so far behind Kimi. I'll give him 7 out of 10. Yes, once again, another great qualified performance where he was half a second quicker than Kimi, but then, of course, Kimi was stuck in traffic on his final qualifying run. But his race pace today was just shy, just and got beat by George Russell. Can I really give more than 7 out of 10 for that? No, come on, man. Pull your sop sock. Seriously, man, your race pace is awful. Compared to your qualifying pace, I mean, you are utterly at an at bang average race, Antonio. Sorry, mate. 17 place, Nicholas Atifi, 7 out of 10. Well, it was another Nicholas Atifi race, wasn't it? Solid, steady, trouble free, but completely unspectacular. You know, I know, obviously, you don't have to. And raw pace of other drivers, but you know, maybe a bit more panache and flair and daring might, you know, help you get along. Might, might, you know, make you, might help to make you a slightly more competitive driver, but you know, you know, you are a rookie in your first season, so I don't blame you for your conservative approach. 18th place, and what could well be his final race in Formula One, Kevin Magnussen, 7 out of 10. Um, also tried to make the hard tyres last in his first stint, but of course, with the horse being an absolute pig, it was never going to happen. What a shame, really. For Kevin Magnussen, one podium, 
from what was his very first uh, start in Formula 1 back in the 2014 Australian Grand Prix. He's never really hit the heights ever since, but he has put in a lot of com uh, consistent performance over his time in Formula 1. Constantly, regularly scoring points for Haas, having pretty much been their best driver for the past three seasons. Um... Yeah, and then of course Pedro Fittipaldi, the standing for Roman Grosjean. Of course, this could well be Pedro Fittipaldi's final race in F1 as well. Even though, of course, it, it, it of course it's only a second race in F1, but seven out of ten for me. Did a steady job, qualified more than half a second so than Magnussen, and frankly, he's done a very good job considering the fact that he's not raced this year and he hasn't done any testing prior to to Sakir. Um, yeah, kept it steady, kept it, kept it very conservative. He did pit in the final five laps for to try and get past his lap in the last few laps. I don't know what came of that, but you know that did put him two laps down. And you know, well done for all your hard work, Pedro. I mean, I don't know whether you're gonna ever get another chance in Formula One. And I will say one more thing, of course, Roman Grosjean. Of course, probably drove his last race at, of course, that ball rig Grand Prix where he escaped from that horrific accident. Um, ten podiums in his time for, in F1, you know, all ten of them coming for Lotus. You know, almost won the 2013 Japanese and the, the what's it, the American Grand Prix. Almost came close to beating Vettel at those races, but of course, you know, a lot of mistakes, unfortunately, from what you know, from a driver who is very known for being incredibly aggressive. But, you know, we're going to miss you, Roman. I've not forgotten about you. And thank you for all your hard work at, at helping um, Haas getting to F1 and all that. And, of course, the only retiree of the race, Sergio Perez. I'm going to give him 8 out of 10. Broke down with a mechanical failure. Of course, this will be his final race for... Um, Racing Point, of course, Racing Point will be renamed Aston Martin for next season. In the same way, Renault will be renamed Alpine for next season. And now let's look at the championship tables. Lewis Hamilton is your world champion, as confirmed at Turkey. Valtteri Bottas finishes in second place, only nine points ahead of Max Verstappen. Very, very poor, very poor there for Valtteri, I may say. Very poor. Um, Max Verstappen finishes third and arguably could have won if had second had it not been for numerous mechanical failures throughout this season. Um, fourth place, Sergio Perez, despite his mechanical failure today, finished very well deserved and for me personally, one of the best drivers this season. Fifth place, Ricardo, sixth, Sainz. Albert, seventh, only seventh, and of course on count back, Sainz gets... For six because of his second at Monza, eighth Leclerc, ninth Norris, tenth Gasly, and then of course second over the table Stroll, Ocon, Vettel, Crevier, Hulkenberg finishes fifteenth despite only having done two races and you know could have would have had um uh, oh yeah that's incorrect by the way that's obviously supposed to be Racing Point not Renault I don't know why on earth they said. Why Renault is there, and I don't know why they've got the McLaren badge agent. That's a complete cock up there by the F1 graphics. But what are they going to do? Um, and of course, if Kolkenberg was a constructor, he would have finished eighth ahead of Alpha Romeo. And of course, yes, 16th Kimi, Geo, Russell, Grosjean, Magnussen, and Latifi is along with Jack Aiken and of course, um. Uh, Pedro Fittipaldi on the three drivers who have failed to score points this season. And moving on to the Constructors' table, as you can see, McLaren have taken P3. A massive, massive result there. Huge consequences for the future of this sport. McLaren are on their way up. They will be using Mercedes engines next season instead of Renault, giving them more of a power boost. Racing Point will be kicking themselves for failing to get P3. They should have got P3. We've a God, they've had that, that's been at times faster than what Red Bull have had. That's a disaster. A completely disastrous result, I may say, for Racing Point. 
should have got third place, but because of poor strategy, poor reliability, and of course, a very questionable, a fairly questionable second driver. Yes, I know Lance Shaw has had his best season F1 of his four-year career, but let's be honest, he's probably cost him quite a few points as well. Of course, he did have to miss out a few races. Not a few races, he did miss out one race, and he did have a run of about five races where he did. He scored zero points. Fifth place, Renault, uh, pretty much only got into contention for the fight for third because of Daniel Ricciardo's podiums at the Nürburgring and Miller. Ferrari finish a very undeserved sixth place only because of BF Shaw Leclerc and of course that race at Turkey saved their backsides big time. Third was it? Uh, 27 points in that one race alone. If it wasn't for that race, Alfa Tori in my opinion would have finished, would have deserved that sixth place but of course they're going to finish seventh and very well Got way, way adrift. Alfa Romeo just eight points of the season. Jesus wept. What a disaster. I mean, they really have gone back to being sober in disguise, haven't they? Horse have finished ninth. They'll probably finish tenth next year. And Williams finished tenth. But of course, I think if we do have a few um, crazy races next, se next season, I will put my money on Williams getting. Uh, points next year and unfortunately this is the first time Williams have failed to score a single point in their whole career in their whole time as an F1 team ever since they first appeared all the way back in 1977 thank you for watching do all the usual stuff here at Crystal Racing and I'll see you again next time